What's happening everyone, Nick here from TV Box Stop and welcome back to another new and exciting TV Box review. Today, I'm happy to announce that finally, someone has been listening to the reviews and comments about live TV Boxes on this channel and decided to act upon them. Today's TV Box is the latest live TV model from Tangular and it's called the Tangular Elite Max series. And what's different about this model from the previous models and other live TV models is that it's running on the Amlogic S905X4 chipset with 4GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage. It has a metal housing design and other premium features which complements their live TV and video on demand service offering a greater value for the price you'll be paying for this unit. So for my full in-depth review, you'll have to stick around as that starts right after this. Welcome back. So the package contains the Elite Max series model itself, one external antenna for the Android box, one HDMI cable, a 5 volts 2 amps DC power supply, one stock infrared remote, another R1 Air Mouse ultra thin rechargeable remote and dongle. They also included a USB Type C charging cable for the remote. You get one user manual for the Android box and a user guide for the Tangler live TV service. So the design of this model is fantastic. Its entire body is made of aluminum with polished edges with the Tangler Elite branding at the top. For input output peripherals, it comes with one HDMI 2.1 port, one RJ45 gigabit LAN port, one optical audio, its DC power input jack, the connector for its external antenna, to the edge here has one USB 2.0 port, and as you make your way to the side, you have another USB 3.0 port and a micro SD card reader. On the opposite side has some ventilation holes. To the front has an LED display, and below the box has four anti-skater rubber feet and lots of ventilation holes. However, I'm yet to identify the location of the reset button. So its boot up process includes a Tangular Elite animation for a few seconds, followed by its launcher. So this launcher is called the Lean Back Launcher and it consists of these large icons and a shortcuts bar here at the bottom. You have the ability to change its wallpaper from a selection of default preloaded images and you have the option to use custom images. It comes with a date and time widget and it features a navigation bar and full status bar with system controls. So this firmware was built using the Android 11 mobile version SDK. Here is its firmware build information and you have access to developer options. For firmware features, you get 4K 2160p display at 59.94Hz. It has HDR display with an adaptive HDR feature. It has HDMI CC options built-in screen rotation to portrait mode, reverse portrait and reverse landscape. It has surround sound audio options. It has a root switch, hardware monitor features, the option to enable and disable the navigation bar and status bar, and it comes in 51 various languages. For streaming movies from services such as Netflix, Prime Video, Disney Plus and HBO Max, this box does not have the required Google Widevine Level 1 or HDCP protection to protect these services from piracy. So even though you can install these apps and use them, their movies will be limited to basic 480p resolution only. And here its DRM information shows that it has Google Widevine Level 3 with no HDCP protection. For root access, out of the box by default, it's not rooted as displayed here by the root checker app. 
But with that said, for those who are concerned about the importance of root access, please note that root access does not affect your ability to stream movies and TV shows. However, certain gamepad key mapping apps need root access to play touchscreen games on Android boxes. Unfortunately, when I attempted to use the included root switch and restart the box, it does not work and the box still remains not rooted. And now a look at its system and hardware information. So this chipset is Amlogic and it comes with 4GB of DDR3 RAM and 128GB of internal storage. Its Bluetooth version is 5.0. Its Amlogic S905X4 CPU is a quad-core Cortex A55 CPU clocked at 2.0 GHz configured in 32-bit mode with support for only 32-bit apps and games. Its display and graphics are powered by the ARM Mali G31 single-core GPU with a refresh rate of 60 Hz with OpenGL version 3.2 support. Under network shows that it has 2.4 plus 5 GHz Wi-Fi support. Its operating temperature is Android 11, internally codenamed Red Velvet Cake, and it shows here that it's not rooted. Its GPU has Vulkan API version 1.1 support, which is great for gaming. For operating temperature, the box idles around 53 degrees Celsius, and we'll monitor to see how high it increases during 3D gaming. And for audio and video decoders, it comes with all of the decoders for the playback of 4K HDR, HLG, AV1 and Dolby Vision videos. It also comes with audio decoders such as Dolby Audio AC3 and DTS HD surround sound audio decoders. And that's its system and hardware information. For watching YouTube videos, it comes pre-installed with the Android TV version and it can play YouTube videos up to 4K 2160p resolution with HDR. It also comes pre-installed with the Smart YouTube TV version and it can play 4K videos in VP9 plus AV1 with HDR. For mirroring your mobile devices to your TV, it comes with the official version of Miracast. However, when I attempted to mirror my Android cell phone or tablet, it fails to connect, so I had to use the AirScreen app as an alternative. The included R01 wireless remote and keyboard combo controller is a nice addition. It's the same model as the W3 model I featured in a previous video, so you can check the link in the description for a full review of this model. It connects to the box using a USB dongle and it provides air mouse cursor movement as well as Google Voice Assistant features. What's the weather in Miami? Right now in Miami, Florida, United States, it's 79 degrees and mostly cloudy. Today, there will be scattered thunderstorms, with a forecasted high of 82 and a low of 73. For customizing your launcher experience, you can change the default wallpaper from preloaded and custom images. However, you cannot use live wallpapers.
For alternative launchers, you can install any alternative launcher and it will work, but unfortunately, you cannot use custom images or live wallpapers. For those into the hobby of creating a library of 4K movies on external storage such as portable hard drives and view them through the box to get HDR, HLG or AV1 decoding, with media players such as VLC, MX Player, Nova Player and Kodi Media Player, you can play all these video types without issues. Equally important as playing 4K videos in various formats is playing these formats with surround sound audio. So here I have it connected to a 7.1 surround sound AV receiver and I'll now test for the most commonly used surround sound formats such as Dolby Atmos, Dolby Digital Plus, Dolby Surround, Dolby True HD, DTS HD Master Audio and the DTS X. One thing to note. I tested all the popular media players and the only media player capable of delivering on all surround sound formats is the MX player. All the other players failed to play one format or the other. This is Dolby Atmos. So this first video comprises of two audio formats, Dolby Atmos and Dolby Digital Plus. When set to multi-speaker configuration, you get Dolby Atmos moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. And when set to front surround configuration, you get Dolby Digital Plus. Next, this video is encoded with a DTS HD Master Audio format. However, when played through this box, you get a DTS Neuralex or Virtualex as some call it. You don't get true DTS HD Master Audio. This video also has two audio formats, Dolby Surround and Dolby True HD. However, none of the media players can play True HD. And this final video is encoded with the DTS X. However, when played, the box outputs the same DTS Neural X. So this test show that this box does not support all of the surround sound audio formats. And for those that do work, not all of the media players support them with the exception of the MX player. For my final demonstration, if you are into Android gaming, then you should know that with its CPU clocked at 2.0 GHz, its temperature can rise as high as 90 degrees Celsius, so I advise that you place a mini cooling fan below the box which keeps it at around 54 degrees during gaming. Also, the only key mapping app that works on this box due to its no root access is the Octopus key mapping app. And 
to close things off, let's take a look at its benchmarks and where it places on my rankings chart. First, the results performed on its RAM copy speed and its internal storage read and write speeds. It has a RAM copy speed of 3390 MB per second. Its internal storage has a read speed of 110 MB per second and a write speed of 44 MB per second. Its USB 3.0 port, when connected to a Samsung EVO M.2 1TB SSD enclosure, it has a read speed of 334 MB per second and a write speed of 294 MB per second. These are the results of the speed test performed on its dual Wi-Fi bands and its Gigabit Ethernet LAN port. So based on my internet speed of 154 megabits per second, the 5 GHz band achieved the maximum speed of my network. Its 2.4 GHz band reached as high as 62 megabits per second. And its Gigabit LAN port also achieved the maximum speed of my network of 154 megabits per second. And in its Antutu benchmark, it scored 93,283. Its CPU single core and multi core performance and its GPU performance scores will be added to the chart for reference. So that's it for the benchmarks, and let's now see where it places on my rankings chart. So I've entered the scores on my rankings chart, and the new Tangular Elite Max Series is at position 37 based on its Antutu benchmark score. And this position is not bad at all and speaks well for its hardware performance. I give it a 4 out of 5 star rating for the quality of its hardware, its unique firmware features and the availability of 5 live TV streaming services taking away the issue of congestion and buffering on one service or the other. So if you would like to view all of its features and compare it to other boxes in this list, you can do so on my blog using the link in the description below this video. And I also provide discounted prices using these links right here and a link to its corresponding video right here. In summary, this is the first live TV Android box that I'm impressed with and I'm 99% satisfied with its firmware features with the exception of the non-functional root switch. You get value for money with the array of live TV streaming options available in one device. It was very thoughtful of them to include a wireless air mouse slash keyboard remote control in your purchase to work with its Google Assistant voice search feature, adding greater value for the money you are paying for this device. I love its design with its aluminum body and its Amlogic hardware delivers great performance. Just keep in mind that if you intend to play high graphic Android games, you need to use a mini cooling fan below to prevent it from overheating. This is not necessary for 4K video playback or streaming of live TV movies or TV series. So that's it for this review. Special thanks to Tangela for sponsoring this video by sending their model for review. And don't forget to take advantage of the discount coupon which I place directly below this video along with a coupon link. So give this video the thumbs up to show your support. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I encourage you to do so by clicking the subscribe button and ringing that notifications bell to keep in the loop when I release new videos or decide to do a giveaway. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, stay tuned and see you in the next one.